continue from Mini Bowl Design, and today I want to announce the winning bidder of item uh, 32, the Elite 3. Nice stuff. Okay, I got a raft of bids on this one. I'm not even going to try to count them. It's just probably 20 of them. <clears throat> but, in the end, only one person can win, and the winning bidder is... Try to pronounce his name correctly. I'm sure I won't get it right, but... Uh, Dan Dockery. D-O-C-K-E-R-Y. Dan Dockery. From uh, Texas. Congratulations, Dan. You're the winning bidder of item 32. I'll send you the link to pay for that, and <clears throat> enjoy. Okay, now before I go any further, item 33, an Elite 3, exactly the same as <clears throat> 32, only 33. Item 33, uh, if you want to bid on that, send your bids to tinny at minibulldesign.com, item 33. That's an Elite 3, exactly like item 32. Uh, very nice, tight, strong. Has the upset edges on the top, just like uh, 32. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, i got a couple things I want to talk about. This is a Leatherman Squirt P4. P stands for pliers. Uh, they make an S for us, S standing for scissors. Uh, you probably see that all is not well in Leatherman land. Now, <clears throat> I bought these from L.L. Bean. And L.L. Bean has a policy that if you buy anything from them, ever, and you're not happy with it, send it back and they'll give you a 100% refund. No questions asked. Well, obviously, having bought this from L.L. Bean, and having one of the jaws missing on the pliers, I'm not happy with it. So believe it or not, I could send this back to L.L. Bean, and they would either give me a new knife or refund my money. On the other hand, <clears throat> this was a quality tool made out of some very, very nice tool steel. And I used it for something it wasn't meant to be used for, and really, really abused it. So I got basically what I had coming to me, uh, a broken knife, pliers. So I guess if I sent it back, uh, I really, in a way, I'd be lying. And I don't lie, so I'm going to take my bumps, throw it in the trash, go buy myself a new one. I got just what I deserved. Okay, we got that out of the way. Now, I need to set some ground rules here on several things that are kind of just out there in the air. One of them is, if you bid on an item, whichever item it may be, uh, and you don't fulfill your obligation within three or four days, I'll give it four days, then I'm going to assume that you're not going to pay for the item and I'm going to rebid it. I have an item out there right now, item 30, that big lot of all the stuff together and uh, the bid hasn't been fulfilled on that yet. I emailed the gentleman and asked him if he wants me to rebid it. It's not a problem to rebid it. Just let me know that you're not going to pay for it. And uh, we'll just rebid it. It's no problem. Uh, easy enough. Okay. Uh, now I have uh, two more things I want to talk about. I'm trying to get everything in here because my little pumpkin brain can't hang on to everything. I got this in the mail from Robert Burgess the other day. Robert and I have had a long relationship. It's been cloudy at times. But uh, I don't know whether you know Robert or not. He is like the ultimate stovey, hands down. Don't anybody, don't anybody else even try to compete. This guy has every alcohol stove and other stoves known to man in numbers. He's got buildings full of these. You name it. <coughs> He's got a couple of them. Thanks, Robert. I was looking up the section on uh, cutting threads, and and uh, I'm learning a little bit on all the time. It's a good book. It's got a lot of, of old school information in it, and then some stuff is timeless. It it uh, isn't old school. It's, it'll always be that way. And I think thread cutting is one of those. So thanks, Robert. I appreciate that. Okay, 
Uh, one other thing I want to talk about very briefly. Uh, I kind of thought maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't, but um, I'm just going to say this once and then I don't ever want to talk about it again. Just a quick thing. Okay, <clears throat> I'm an inventor. You know that. Uh, I've invented a lot of stuff over the years. I invented, <clears throat> although I didn't invent the original concept, I took the chicken water or, or whatever you want to call it, the remote feed, and applied it to alcohol stoves. I was the one that did that. I designed it. I come up through the models. I make one now that's out of solid plastic with the threads cut right in what that was. My idea, my design. Okay, I put that out there and showed it to everybody, just like I have everything else I've built. I have a video on, I'd say, everything that I make. I have a video showing how I do it. Now, if somebody else uh, wants to make that product and even sell it, uh, not a problem. I don't have any patents on it. So, you know, if you want to sell that, that's fine. That's just uh, the way the Internet goes. One small point, and as I used to say, the devil's in the details. I think any reasonable person would agree that if you were going to take one of my designs and reproduce it, that telling everybody that it was your idea and not mentioning that you got it from Mini Bowl Design and not mentioning Tinny, that would be lying. And, and I think you'll find legally that that also would be stealing a design and presenting it as your own. Uh, that's frowned on quite a bit. So yeah, my designs are out there and anybody can build them that wants to and anybody can sell them that wants to. But you're not allowed to take credit for them. You have to give credit where credit's due. You can just say, I got the basic idea from Tinny and then I did this to it and I did that to it. But you have to admit that the original concept came from me. And that's the difference between taking somebody's idea and working with it and stealing it. Plain and simple. Said once, doesn't need to be said again. Fair enough. The devil is in the details. Okay. Uh, what's next? I went out this morning and I did a bad, bad thing. When I built the uh, droop tops, I put them in the store. I only had just a few of them. I put 25 in the store. And I didn't have 25 belts, so I've had to go out every day, and Beth has given me a list, and there's been, you know, five or six every day that I didn't have belts. So I went out this morning and built 10. I built five yesterday. Uh, I'm going to go out after this video and build 10 more. Uh, they're kind of a fun thing to build. I've got all the tooling right where it's supposed to be, everything all set up. So I think I'm going to go back out and build 10 of them uh, before I tear down and, and change the tooling. Uh, and that way it'll be a lot easier. Okay, second thing. <clears throat> this Elite Stove is right at the top of my game. This is the best soda can stove I've ever built, hands down. And I've actually gotten to the point where uh, in my life where I can look at a stove, see a problem in it, and then actually come up with a cure for the problem. And believe me, this stove, as it starts out, has many, many, many problems. And I've cured all of them. I don't, this stove right here, I cannot think of anything that's a problem at this point in time. Other than it's slow to light, and I may put a wick on some of them. I really hate to do that, but it may be make them more user friendly if I put uh, like a three row wick on them. Two, probably two rows would do it, and then they would light immediately. But a lot of people, half the ambiance of that is is lighting the inside and waiting for it to blossom and just just lightly moving the air. See what happens is when when the uh, alcohol comes out the jet, it's just the fumes, uh, the alcohol vapor, just it's just floating up there. Until you, it comes in contact with the flame, it won't light. So it's coming out, and when you blow a little bit, the flame will, the vapor will bend over and get into the flame and, and light. So it's kind of an art form to get one of these to light. I don't know whether I should go with the primer work or not. Uh, leave the comments and let me know what you think. Another thing is, uh, somebody asked me why on the droop top, why well, I just didn't invert it and put 
sides up on the side, make it a little bigger so the room for the wick, put sides up on the side so the alcohol couldn't run down. The answer to that is, if I did that, if I had a donut wick with sides on it, uh, that would be a Bongo Pro Turbo Top. I've been there, done that. The problem with the sides on it is, uh, the bottom and the sides up is, the, the bottom of the wick can't burn because it's down against the al aluminum and the sides can't burn because they're against the shoulder and it cuts the uh, heat output right in half by using the turbo top with the sides on it. Sure, you won't spill any alcohol but you cut your heat right in half. So by going the other way around and droop top you get double the heat because you've got so much wick exposed to the air. It can burn top, sides, and underneath too uh, up to the heat shield uh, that it's worth being careful when you fuel it up. And with the droop top, that makes it that much better. And if you want to go to the next uh, safety base, then it's the ultimate stove, in my opinion. And, and that's the reason why I don't do the up the side thing. Other people have done that. Uh, that's old technology. We don't do that anymore. Some people have even done it and then put a donut wick on top of it, which doesn't make any sense at all. But everybody to their own. So, uh, that's Everything I have to say today, I believe, I bid off item 33 and send you uh, bids for item 33 to Tinny at miniboldesign.com. Item 33. So I'm going to sign off here. I'm Tinny from Mini Bull Design. Get out and hike. Take a friend. Enjoy the great outdoors. And more important than anything, try to set some time aside today to have a little fun. And try to have a really great day. Bye-bye.